Um, so just to kick us off, I mean, I don't know anything about any of you guys. So how many of you run businesses right now? Impressive. Well then. Um, how many of you wish to in the future? <laughs> more, more of you? Um, and how many of you are likely to be employees in the future? Like, I would suggest everyone at some point, um, because you, you learn from other people's mistakes. Um, so, I am uh, Ben. I'm just going to see if this works. Uh, Yay! Okay, cool. Um, so I'm a web designer. Um, I've worked for Virgin Head Office. Um, I'm currently working on my own startup. Um, I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about Virgin. I'm going to talk about Unity, which is my startup. I'm going to talk about some interesting stuff, hopefully. Um, and the whole point of my talk is to put into um, your minds that there is a practicality by everything we've said tonight. Um, and all the other speakers, um, in my mind, have been... Um, inspirational, but it doesn't really get your businesses done, and it doesn't really, um, you know, it's not the practicality behind making your business social, or making it conscious, or whatever verbs, or you know, whatever we're using um, the terminology here. Um, so, if I'm going to, it's like if you get anything from this, then this is it. But um, I'll come back to this later. Um, every business should be a social business, and that's like something that you should all know by now. Um, whether you're starting a new company, it's a social enterprise, or you're, you're hoping to make loads of money in the stock market, or whatever it is, you should um, know that it, your business is in the world, and therefore you impact people, planet, um, economic industries, and all sorts of other things. Um, so I did uh, music tech, um, which was great, but then I decided that I didn't want to do it as a job. Um, I then went through like a university uh, startup competition <coughs> and I had some mentoring and stuff like that. That didn't really go anywhere and then because I was doing something kind of akin to Spotify and then Spotify turned up and it's like, um, which was a blow, fine, <laughs> over it. Um, I then went on to uh, go to uh, Goldsmiths and do this creative and cultural entrepreneurship um, which was awesome because it was like a year of um, reading and also thinking about your own ideas and being with lots of other people thinking about their own ideas. Um, so I'm currently freelancing um, after spending three years in Virgin and Virgin's weird because it's a massive corporate body but actually the head office is about 100 people um, and we just oversee the same office thing and there's loads of lawyers and um, accountants and then there's social media team and then there's like designers and stuff and that's me. Um, so I kind of get to see all that sort of stuff. Um, so there's Virgin. I'm going to press down. No, okay. Okay, so that's working. Um, so Virgin is massive um, and like I say, it's, um, it's got lots of companies and it kind of works like a franchise as they, um, a lot of the companies, they don't necessarily have a stake in. Some of them, they only may pay a license fee, um, and some of them they, they own outright. So um, it's kind of interesting when you're thinking about Virgin as a thing, and it's, it's kind of like lots of companies, really, with the same name. Um, they changed their values recently, and Erica brought this up earlier with uh, her reference to the B team and Rich Branson and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's kind of been in his DNA originally. I know all about Richard Branson now. I've been there three years. I know everything. I've like met him like ten times and shaken his hand and gone, you don't know my name, and I go, yes. Um, which is a shame, but one day he'll know my name. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so yeah, so recently they've changed their, their values and they weren't too far estranged from this, but um, they've kind of gone, right everyone, uh, it's not just head office that needs to know this stuff, it's everyone who needs to know this stuff. And this is broadly what it is, there's other bits and bobs, but it's kind of business is a force for good. Um, and that is a lovely fluffy notion. Um, so I was talking to um, some like old co-workers about doing this talk and um, I mentioned that I was going to talk a little bit about what, what they do in Virgin because I thought it was interesting. 
uh, in respect to what I'm doing, because I haven't really achieved this stuff yet, um, is that they've got lots of old companies which are stuck in their own ways, and they've got lots of new companies which are much easier to deal with because they're new entities. Um, so some of the old companies, um, do, does anyone know what um, CSR means? Um, so, your own company? Oh, sorry? Yeah, so corporate um, social responsibility. Um, and CSR is great. Uh, I think I've got a slide later on that says um, CSR is so 2010. It's so over CSR now because people should be incorporating CSR thinking from the ground level up. But um, this is an example of how uh, another one is balloon flights. Uh, I think this is brilliant. They kind of went, oh, shit, we need to like look at the wildlife and stuff, and if that's not there, then we don't have a business anymore. So they've, they've put um, money and effort into getting people uh, interested, one, they're in the balloons, actually, um, about what's going on in the development of below them. So uh, they might be kind of like, oh, there's a dual carriageway going to be built down there. And, then, and you'd be like, oh, I don't think that should happen because it's a massive field. So telling people about um, all the damage that um, different things are going to cause uh, to the lovely like um, environment and countryside. Uh, so those are kind of the old, some of the old businesses and things that you can do. Um, some of the new businesses, this is kind of a cop out my front because these are kind of social enterprises anyway. Um, so one's the Earth Challenge. Um, it's a massive, massive fund to fund uh, mainly scientific research in uh, environment and sorts of solar stuff and carbon capture. Um, and Carbon War Room is a similar thing where it's kind of about incubating amazing ideas which they, they actually do take to market. So one of their other things is, you know, on the side of your fridge, you have like A plus environmental thing or like on different gadgets and stuff, you might have a, um, this is environmentally friendly and it gets a B score and A score and stuff like that. Well, they've done this, done this for shipping, like massive freight containers and they all get scored on how terrible and old they are or how great and efficient they are, which is um, hugely impactful because um, all our stuff comes from China and it has to get shipped somewhere. Um, obviously a huge generalisation, but sure. Um, so that's some stuff. This is me, um, kind of green. Um, Eulogy is about connecting um, researching universities with companies, um, charities, and other institutions. So um, we kind of believe that, um, I don't know if you've heard about MOOCs and, and about online learning. There's a lot of, um, lot of like big business going into online learning and that's really, really interesting for undergraduates and, and college and, and school year. But what happens when you, you learn stuff and you want to make stuff and that's kind of what I believe that the, a lot of masters, PhD are doing all this research um, and not really getting uh, maybe the, the networks that they need or the funding or the resources or the support basically. So that's what we hope to do. Um, so if you have, even if you're an undergraduate and you wanted an internship, you could go on there and post a project and it's, it's all about specific, specificity. I can't actually say that word. But um, you may or may not be doing something very, very specific to someone in, in America or a business in Zimbabwe, um, and vice versa. So you could, through the website, find partners with companies or charities who are specifically looking for you. Um, and that's the kind of general idea. So it's not a competition. It is, you have some research which you're doing, which you think is of value, and you may need X, Y, and Z, kind of funding, support, um, a commercial partner, someone who's going to bring you to market, um, all those sorts of stuff, someone who just is interested in putting it to the real world. Um, and um, you, it's like a dating website, you go on there, you post it on there, and it matches you up with someone else. Uh, and that's the kind of deal, really. And it's free, so check it out. It's available now. Um, so we, we kind of have some values, but like I say, we're kind of roughing this up right now. Um, so, I'm interested in the creative economy and information economy. Um, just, just so much of our money in, in the UK comes from um, 
just arts and um, information and um, education export. Um, so I'm interested in disseminating some of that information away from the institution because a lot of that stuff just sits in libraries. <coughs> I know that my masters did. Um, and also I like academia, so I want to support it. And I hope you do too. Um, so it's kind of a cop out because I kind of feel like my company is, is in the second realm of is new and it's kind of socially focused already so I don't, I don't really have a massive headache in trying to get a, like, steer it in that direction. But as I will hopefully lead you to discover, um, having a social aim is just what you're doing, it's not necessarily how you're running. Um, so every business should be um, a social business. Uh, there you go, CSR. Um, it's uh, in Wikipedia. This is what's this is what's bad about CSR, right? So CSR's blah 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 blah, blah um, spirit of law, ethical standards, and international norms, right? This is everything I hate about um, CSR because you're basically looking over your shoulder at the next company and going, "What are they doing? You better do that." Yeah. And you're not thinking about actually doing something new or or clever or actually improving yourself. You're just keeping norm with everyone else. So never do, never outdo yourselves. Don't worry about it. Don't have an amazing like employee scheme. Just have the normal, okay? So that's bad. Um, there's a lot of this going around at the moment. There's a lot of talks on TED and stuff um, that says you should be thinking about uh, people, planet, and profit. I specifically put in this order because we all focus on profit already, everyone does. We don't need to have profit at the beginning of this. Um, so you should be focusing on the people, planet, and if you're in business, you're making money. That's how I kind of think about it. If you're not making money, you're not in business, basically. Um, how does the government think about this? I told on the uh, lovely new uh, gov.co, whatever, .gov. Uh, website, and um, I don't know if you've not been on it, it's really good, it's just so plain and simple. Um, so if you set up social enterprise at the top, this is kind of one I need a pointer. Is there a pointer? The top one for social enterprise is limited company. You could be a charity, you could be a cooperative, you could be a community interest company, but don't bother, be a limited company, because what you can do with limited companies is anything. So you don't have anyone else to adhere to but your own consciousness <clears throat> or conscious capitalism. Um, so practically, um, obviously that's the, the Google um, kind of can phrase, do no evil. So what can you actually do as a limited company or a company which could do anything and could be evil? What you need to do is bake the non-evilness into the company. You have these fabulous things which are really oblique when you start a company called uh, Articles of Incorporation. And they basically tell the world how your company operates. And if you tell the world you're, you operate in a, in a nice fashion um, and you believe in sustainable practice and um, paying your employees well and all that sort of stuff, and you bake it into your company um, articles, you basically go to prison if you don't do it, because it's, it's legal. You're legally bound by your own ridiculousness in this document. Um, and I, I'll, um, I had a fight with my uh, company secretary recently because you can't really put anything in there. If I wanted, if I had like three founders and we all disagreed on something, we could just play roulette for whoever would um, then win out in that. Um, so you can do all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, I wouldn't do that, obviously. You should you know, come up with something sensible. But don't be put off by the language. Um, you figure out what you want to do, you get someone to formulate it into a language which is legally binding, and then you incorporate your company. You should also reflect this in your ethos and language. Um, if you're not talking about it, and you're not talking about your internally and externally, then it's probably not happening. Um, and it's also a competitive advantage. If you're talking to your customers and they know that you are 
uh, extremely nice um, to your employees and your employees are happy to talk to their friends about how amazing their company is, then you're already winning. And uh, that's one thing that Virgin concentrated quite a lot on, having happy employees. Um, and everything outside of you, so pr procurement contracts is a good one. Um, how can you touch other people with your company and try and um, make them do nice things as well? Um, so this is just random stuff now. Um, <coughs> transparency over salaries is uh, something I found the other day, which is all about having a formula for your employee's salary so that everyone knows exactly what they're getting and how they're getting it. And having that openness means that you don't have that water cooler moment with your, your employees and go, yeah, how much do you earn? And they're like, I'm telling you, a lot. Because <laughs> everyone knows, it's, it's easy, you know? Um, so check that out, that's interesting. I'll, I'll give you these slides afterwards if anyone cares. Um, they're actually already online at that address. Um, email transparency, uh, Stripe is a uh, competitor to PayPal and they're awesome, so use them instead of PayPal. But um, they are, every email they send internally gets put on a list which everyone then has access to look at, which might seem like a ridiculous idea, but it, it means that you can't swear at each other and things like that, or if you do, Someone's going to see that, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, open company, this kind of comes back to something we've heard earlier on by Eric, I think. Um, transparency, openness, um, there's a company that are trying to uh, promote openness and stuff like that. So these are kind of like practical things that you can do, um, and also open source, open data, things that you make, um, try and make them available to other people because um, it's hugely beneficial if you, we wouldn't have the internet right now if people didn't do that, basically. Um, so that, I think, is everything.